Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokegame here and today we're going to be talking about the current OU metagame and my thoughts on it and in the form of a survey that Finchinator has put up. So if you guys do like these types of videos, obviously leave a like, subscribe, let me know and give me your comments on anything we talk about. I'm sure we'll have different opinions and also feel free to fill out the survey as well. I'll leave a link to that down below since your opinion does matter at least when it comes to uh, this version of the game we play. So, this is a regularly conducted survey gauging public opinion on the metagame at the current time. The survey will be sent out to many different people. If you'd like to see full details of the survey, please check out this link and it just links back to uh, right here. They're just trying to make the best decisions possible towards the tier and want to get as many people as possible. So what is my spawn on username? We'll be filling it out. Aim. On a scale from 1 to 10, how much do you enjoy the current metagame? C. Do you enjoy playing it? I'm going to say an 8 or 9. Uh, I actually really do like the current metagame and I feel like if you go to my channel, it's also kind of been uh, reflecting on that too. Uh, you see me using Drift Blim and uh, also Blender and I use Galizabod and whatever together. Uh, and even though OLT does quote unquote ruin the ladder at times, it also makes it that much more sweeter when you win because you're making everybody else's life harder too. But uh, yeah, I've actually been enjoying the current metagame and I'm not going to let, you know, my opponents loading up a certain type of team or play style I don't like. A few times just because they're trying to get into you know a competition ruin that so I'd say an 8 or a 9 for sure on a scale from 1 to 10 how good do you find the current metagame C do you find it competitive uh, I actually think we're at a place in the metagame where there isn't too too much that is overly busted uh, there are a few Pokemon and this is actually a very funny uh, this is actually a very interesting question that comes up next but uh, we're at this point in the metagame where there are uh, it's pretty pretty good right like, there isn't anything that I think that's overly crazy. I do have thoughts on Kirim. I do have thoughts on Volcarona. And I'm sure my subscribers all said, Oh, you get 6 0 by, you know, you're, yeah, yeah, over here, like, you 6 0 by Kirim. 6 0 by Volcarona. Oh my god, Joey. Life Orb. Focus Blast. Whatever. But personally, um, Specs Kirim is still a problem to switch into. I don't give a damn what anybody says. And Volcarona is a little bit a uh, matchup dependent so but otherwise do i find it competitive and yeah i give it an eight as well i wouldn't give anything a 10 but i'd say something around there again you guys feel free to give your thoughts now this is interesting do you support or would you support a ban of king's rock in sword and shield oh you know this is something that finch and a lot of people have tried to bring up i think a few times and they're finally having it in the form of a survey i believe there was also a thread on smoke on as well so those that don't know king's rock gives your moves a chance to flinch now this is in, uh, especially seen on Cloyster because I believe Cloyster has like, what is it, a 42%, 41, 43, it's one of those uh, percent chance to flinch with Icicle Spear because of Skill Link. Uh, and then like Weavile with Beat Up is also another example that you might randomly see too. Now, do I support a ban of it? Well that would say, do I think that King's Rock is uncompetitive because it is a luck based item that uh, doesn't really offer anything else besides luck and I guess when you look at King's Rock itself right you have that it offers you more offensive capabilities right it gives Cloyster the ability to beat Pokemon that it otherwise should not be beating especially with uh, Z moves and Dynamax not being allowed or even in the game at this point right so examples would be Cloyster beating down Pokemon like Toxapex or Tabu Fini so bulky waters uh, other examples more extreme would be to uh, Cloyster beating a Pokemon like Melmetal which is something that it needs multiple flinches to do, but it's definitely possible and has happened in OLT. And I think this definitely comes to light when we're seeing a lot of offense. But do I think there is a difference between me using a move that gives me an extra chance? And also, and when, when I say defensive capabilities as well, it gives the Pokemon a chance to live when it otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, but there are other examples of items that can do that for Cloyster, i.e. Focus Sash. But I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so, do I find the extra chance of luck uncompetitive? And again, this is, uh, it, my, my long answer is, or my short answer is no, uh, personally. <laughs> um, but I have to explain why I'm like not really, I'm, I'm not really into the King's Rock ban, so I am going to. Uh, take a move like Scald, for instance. People use Scald not for the power, but because it can burn. Otherwise, we'd all use Surf. Uh, Finchinator actually made a video and also gave his thoughts on that as well. Uh, but... Uh, let me see if I can actually play it because I would like to respond to him too while we're doing this. Cause I know we have uh, different uh, we have different opinions uh, when it comes to it, and I was uh, just rewatching it. So, all right. So, 
I found the part on Finch's video where he talks about Scald, so we're gonna listen to him and then I'll give my thoughts on what he has to say. G chant, if you will. You can argue, okay, but how about things like Scald and Focus Blast? Those moves are heavily RNG oriented. You really would only use Scald over Surf if you wanted to get a burn. And yeah, that is true, but Scald still has a secondary, you know, additional characteristic. It's not just like a burn move, it's not gonna like 100% burn. It's only 3rd chance burn, but also it does still do a lot of damage in a Pokemon that users are u largely using it as a stab attack. It, you know, burn is the secondary, not the primary and only. And King so I, I just want to talk about this. Um, while he's not right, I think he definitely underplays just how important Scald is. Because if you look at OU and you look at Scald, basically every Pokemon that can run Scald will. Right? Slowbro, Slowking, even Galarian will run it, Feeny will run it, Toxpex will run it, um, or every special Pokemon because, and they're not doing it because of the, the uh, additional water stab. No, they're doing it because it has the burn chance. Otherwise, they'd run Surf, uh, and this does allow progression, and this is something that uh, King's Rock also does too. It does allow progression, not in the same ways that uh, obviously Scald does, or an attack in general, but uh, I think that argument is just it's weird to me because, I mean, even like Galarian Slowking, right? Galarian Slowking could easily run Sludge Wave, uh, the pros of Sludge Wave. It's stronger than Sludge Bomb, and it could even hit something like Bulletproof Como, right? However, it runs Sludge Bomb because of that 30% chance to poison, because when we're in a metagame with heavy-duty boots and their bulky Pokemon and stuff, being able to burn uh, obviously lets you move forward and actually threaten Pokemon that you otherwise wouldn't, which is kind of exactly what King's Rock does. Now, I'm not saying you can remove, you can't remove RNG completely from Pokemon, period, right? And he even talks about how it is chess uh, if, if they remove RNG, and I agree. And in fact, it's boring chess if, if we're gonna go even farther, because imagine Kalmine Suicune versus Kalmine Suicune not being able to crit or having to stall each other out, or Kalmine Clefable, or any just setup mon versus setup, right? Where it's equal in terms of setup, they would have to uh, stall each other out. So I think that this is just, this is interesting because we use Scald, Tapu Fini uses Scald, and even last metagame they use Scald too, and they would Scald into Rillaboom, or at least Bulu in the last metagame, because they have a chance to burn it. You burn Fini, you have a chance to beat it. So, uh, whereas if you use Surf, you actually have a better shot at beating Pokemon like Spadef Heatran and things like that too. Same thing with Slowking and Slowbro, they have better shots at beating Spadef Heatran if they use Surf, but they use Scald instead because of that burn chance. So this is something that, obviously, um, it's just interesting to me because like the whole... Uh, but they use it because it's a move and it can burn. Yeah, and same thing. King's Rock, we use it because it is, <laughs> it's an item that ups our progression. It gives close to the ability to beat Pokemon that it otherwise would it. And again, there are drawbacks of using this item. Um, for one, I did an entire showdown live with Blunder. Uh, when we're basically the entire live for 48 minutes, we flinched nobody. And we had King's Rock on every Pokemon. Garchomp. Uh, Weavile, Urshifu, um, we also did one with Cloyster as well, and I did one with Cloyster as well, where we did not flinch anybody, and of course, that's just an example of that, like, that doesn't really actually matter, it's just my experiences with it, so, I just find it really hard, uh, to, to justify betting item like that, because of the luck aspect, when we also allow abilities like Sand Veil, um, and even items like Bright Powder, too, uh, which, is the exact same thing as King's Rock, and uh, I'll, I'll get into why it's the exact same thing, but King's Rock bolsters your ability to be an offensive threat, and also uh, it, it ups your defense too, because if you can't be hit, I mean, you're, you're, you survive, right? Bright Powder on Garchomp under Sand, now obviously there's limited turns with this and things like that, but it has mattered. If the opponent cannot be hit by an attack, same property as being flinched, it makes Garchomp better at what it does, and on top of being able to get off, you know, more offensive attacks. So, again, would I support a ban of King's Rock? I wouldn't without looking at other things and other aspects of Pokemon itself. And I don't think that it's so monumentally huge that it deserves a ban. Especially when the odds are under 50% to do this. Like, it's like, like I'm banning Skull, like it's 30%. Um... And though, obviously, Scald is different, but Skull can be game-changing as well. You burn a Zero Aura that's bulk up with your Slowbro because you lived on 4%, and then the Zero Aura doesn't win anymore type of thing, right? But obviously, King's Rock uh, is different because you can't really play around it too much. And uh, one of the um, one of the arguments uh, for Pro King's Rock 
or, or at least that versus you know other moves is that uh, this is a harder much harder to play around which I, I agree it is hard to play around because anything can flinch but uh, and the, I guess the argument for like scald and stuff is that you can have Pokemon that can be burnt and they won't mind as well and I guess that's completely fine too but that this is also saying like Cloyster doesn't guarantee the flinch too there's definitely plenty of games where having a life orb would make a difference in terms of damage output like actually being able to smack let's say if you ran Hydro Pump uh, actually being able to to smack um, uh, or a Mel Metal with Pump, right? Or a Life Orb being able to actually knock out something like Rillaboom at plus two with Ice Shark from from full. So there are drawbacks of uh, using the item. Sorry, something just fell, but uh, I wanted to show uh, just a calc, just so I can say exactly what I'm saying now. Uh, and <clears throat> Like even when I play, when I always play versus Cloyster, you'll always see me setting up rocks just in case they are Focus Ash because a Cloyster with the ability, especially versus offense, a Cloyster with the ability to set up uh, makes a difference. So this is like standard, this is Life Orb, so at plus two, you're actually, you know, 96 to 114, whereas without, you're never killing, so you need some chip and obviously Grassy Glide of minus one is killing. And yeah, you do have that chance to flinch them uh, with that particular turn, but I mean, it's, it's King's Rock, right? So like, it's not like... Uh, it's not like it's, it's not a guarantee, especially when you're coming off of one hit, right? It's only a 10% chance to flinch, whereas you have a way higher chance to kill it if you were Life Orb in that scenario. Am I saying Life Orb Cloister is good? No. Uh, but am I saying that I don't think King's Rock is as cookie cutter as people think it is? Yeah. Um, we're going to watch a little bit more of our parts of his video as well. King's Rock can again differentiate itself because the only thing it has any business doing is increasing chances of RNG. Now you might be saying, okay, how do you differentiate it from something like Serene Grace? Well, that's a very valid question. I think Serene Grace and maybe Sandvale and uh, Snowcloak, although I'm personally fine banning Sandvale and Snowcloak because they're competitive. But I think that's fair too. Like if, if this point had been brought up as well, if you're just going to ban luck items, I think you got to go the whole nine yards. I don't think that, again, King's Rock is singular in terms of that because Sandvale can be game-changing too. Look at... Uh, literally every tier <laughs> that's lower where we ban Sandvale and stuff. I also want to know another Pokemon that has, you know, above a 40% chance to uh, basically gain uh, progression and uh, do what King's Rock does, and that is Galarian Slowbro, right? Because uh, this thing has, what is it, a 43% chance to, a 43 or 44% chance uh, to move first because of Quick Draw plus Quick Claw and they stack. And this the difference between this and, and Cloyster is that this Pokemon sets up on way more Pokemon in the current metagame than Cloyster actually does, right? Uh, simply because of its dual typing. Obviously, resisting fairy is a big thing too. And its ability to actually knock out Pokemon too, right? At plus two, its ability... Well, let's give it a little bit of speed. It should be you know, more than Pex naturally or something like that. But its ability to actually knock out Pokemon at plus two. And I did an entire live where... Um, it was Nasty Plot, like a flamethrower and sludge bomb. I did sludge bomb as well for poisons, but uh, I did an entire live where this Pokemon just put in work and it actually got progression because it's easier to set up a Nasty Plot than it is to Shell Smash. And Shell Smash is weakening your defenses, whereas Bro can actually come in on a ton. And I'll go to the, uh, the live real quick. Damn, I got some good thumbnails, man. See, I'd be coming up with these ideas, but Pedro just makes them look absolutely incredible how long? it was way it was way less than a month ago i actually skipped over it. i know i did here it is shut up so you see in the uh oh the gfi uh you see right here i've set up turn four and then i've already oh it was side shot so it could be blissy but as you see right here like it's already easy to see how much this pokemon puts in work uh initially so i i just, it's I understand that it is used less than Cloyster, which is the main thing over it, right? Like why you would say Cloyster over G-Bro, but this is something else. If we're going to look at Cloyster, like it's hard for me to say not this. So look, obviously I get up my light screen here as the thing goes for Moonblast, whatever. I get up a Reflect. I set up my Nasty Plot as they go out into, I believe, Infiltrator. Infiltrator uh, Dragapult, which would obviously knock me out with uh, Shadow Ball and Specs. And I play the odds, and I get my stuff. And there goes Dragapult, right? So counterplay gone in one. Whereas, I don't need to flinch. 
I don't need to flinch. And on top of that, right? I don't, I don't need to flinch in order to accomplish my goal. On, I do need to get this, but on top of that, I'm still bulky enough and have enough resistances. I'm not lowering my defensive with Shell Smash, so it just makes it a lot harder for me. Oh, you want to see the rest of this low bro throughout this entire live? Because if you miss this live, man, you missed a ton. You see, uh, obviously, Corviknight come out and me, you know, being able to smack it there. I wasn't willing to risk it on Garchomp just because this mon could come in later, uh, but... Uh, I get a little bit of chip on the, uh, the Lele there. I go Garchomp, I click Earthquake, whatever. Clefable comes out. I can I have the defensive utility because of my typing to just bring out this. And the great thing is Lele can knock me out. I get my quick draw, Lele dies. I'm still at 100%, right? And I beat, basically, I beat both Toxabex and Clefable 1v1. All I have to do is Nasty Ply here. I am faster than them. They go for knockoff. Doesn't matter. I'm still faster. I And plus, I still have a shot to activate my thing anyway if it was... A random speed tie there yep and i get it so it's just like and this happened consistent my title is amazing but this happened uh consistently throughout the live and i want to just find other examples of slow bro helping me out um well i played with dragonite as well in this but oh get it versus the uh the rain team right here here you go i played a rain team and you know i, I guess i have potential to lose depending on if it was like Draco into like a crunch or something like that, but uh, my bro had its chance to do it and it did it. So like I I, I feel like it's tough. My, my point being is that I think it's tough to just look at King's Rock when we have other things that can do b damn near the exact same thing and at sometimes better, right? And I just think that this is also just another mod that's not, that's overlooked as well. Like Cloister does set up on physical Pokemon because of its great high base defenses, but while Shell Smashing it is lowering its defenses, so it's usually taking a hit after, and then it has to depend on flinching to do it. Whereas this guy can basically do the exact same thing, um, has almost the same chance, right, to uh, to move first as well, and then uh, beat whatever counterplay it has and can even end up on higher HP and has an easier time setting up. So that was just, this opponent took a long time, but basically what happened here is they just lost. They got, I got my quick draw there and then Barrasquita came out and I got it there too. So, and that was on high ladder as well, 1850 plus. But yeah, so this is just something I also wanted to add uh, that I was, I had to like do something. So yeah, uh, of course, again, sand being infinite makes a huge difference when it comes to that, but it's still a probability item at the end of the day, and it's still the same chance, and he goes on to talk about how uh, Serene Grace is different because, well, Jirachi, for instance, is locked into it, and obviously Jirachi has a higher chance because it's 60% chance. Like, Jirachi has no other ability is the main thing that Finch points out, uh, which I agree, and uh, I, 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 I just find it really hard personally because I, I agree with him on Jirachi obviously we're not going to ban Jirachi for because it's, it's what it is but like it, it feels the exact same to me like yes it has a chance to potentially be every Pokemon in theory and King's Rock has a chance to do that too but the reason is Cloyster being able to Icicle Spear is what makes this thing even better or multi-hit moves being able to think so is it is it King's Rock or is it is it the, the Pokemon not, using not it yeah make it one you know talk about it in your posts and your videos and whatever you do if you're listening to this but um let's talk about that for a second here so um sorry lost my train of thought okay so serene grace the thing about it is it is something that you need to use on drops there's no other ability get and it's the only ability that doesn't potentially um not focus on rng for tokus like like the thing on tokus is you could use hustle but then you have a chance of missing you use super luck but then there's a chance of crit it's all in the same boat like the fact that it matters, Serene Grace is something that you don't really have the choice to use in those capacities. Whereas King's Rock, you actively have the choice to use. What we're doing in what we'd be doing in banning King's Rock is we'd be removing that choice and making the game focus on more the better player wins rather than the sole RNG element wins. So that's how you can differentiate King's Rock from any other RNG, and then King's Rock from some specific other RNG things. Admittedly, the line there is a bit thinner. I can totally understand why someone would want to ban Sand Veil and Snow Cloak because you're actually choosing to make those decisions. Although some of some some Pokemon have that fall into the same boat as Serene Grace, but neither here nor there right now when it comes to king's rock it's pretty clear to me that it's unique you could justify banning it and it's also very clear that it doesn't make the metagame better in any capacity close your flinching teams out is just sheer chance and it's not naturally like strategy that really garners much skill so you can maximize your odds which is a skill but at the end of the day it's still gonna come down to that and so many games have been decided by that so much 
and again, I, 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 that point right there is really like resonates with me. You can maximize your odds, and that is a skill. That is what Pokemon is about, right? You're never going to have a hundred percent chance to win in most cases, uh, just because maybe you have inaccurate moves or you have this, this, and this. So you'll get it as close to a hundred percent as possible. I mean, there are games where you could have a hundred percent. My opponent has a Pikachu, and I have a Scarf Landers, and they're not Focus Sash. If I click Earthquake, I have a hundred percent chance to win, right? Obviously, in that sort of one v one scenario, but. If Pokemon is about maximizing odds itself, I, 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 it's still harder for me to see the difference between this and see and like, you know, complaining about skull burning or, uh, or you know, uh, sludge bomb poison or, or, or type of things. I, I just find them very, very similar in a sense. And they're both doing the same thing. They're trying to progress the game. They're also trying to maximize odds. If King's Rock is the best item on Cloyster because it gives the opponent the chance to progress the game and i still have a fair shot of playing it you know and i still have a fair shot of doing over 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 a coin flip of beating it i, I just, it's it's hard for me to justify it's hard for me to justify um a ban uh, without bringing up other aspects uh, as well so i would say no i do not ban king's rock i know my stuff is all over the place too but i have a lot more but it's just like this is just it's such an interesting thing for me um and i mean everybody's gonna be biased towards it too do i think it brings anything any aspect from the game or does, does it bring any benefits from the game i think one of the benefits is the fact that cloister is not running focus sash so i can actually kill it with some attacks too because uh, cloister is obviously not always going to be able to shell smash as well at least in that scenario right weavile being beat up is different because weavile is a high speed tier um so it you know, a, a chance of it being fast and you is different, but Cloyster actually needs the opportunity to set up, which has to go with dual screens or Aurora Veil or whatever with that. So there's a whole lot of aspects. It's not just King's Rock is broken, period, in my opinion. Um, and again, Finch, if you listen to this, feel free to leave as many of your thoughts as possible. I, I mean, I've talked with you before. I don't find it absolutely broken. Uh, but then again, I want Darmanitan, Galarian Darmanitan to have a suspect test, so my opinion doesn't really mean much. Are there any Pokemon in the current metagame that you believe deserve a suspect test? Sure. Uh, I've mentioned them. Um, Kiram and Volcarona. Just because on paper, uh, on paper, like in play, it's different. And I talked about Kiram. I talked about Volcarona in my stop telling me this, this, and this type of videos. But um, on paper, they are very hard to team build around. When we were team building in East, uh, we found it very annoying to have to deal with both of them. Um, just because, I mean, Volcarona, the best answer, the only real answer is Heatran, right? Every other Pokemon has a shot to lose to it. Even Dragonite can get burnt as a dual wing beats into Flame Body or anything like that, right? Where Heatran is the only Pokemon that can beat it because of lack of hidden power. Uh, and Kiram as well, Specs is just a freaking pain for balance, offense, or anything to switch into. But in play, it's not as crazy as it could be, depending on your type of teams. Um, but I just think that, uh, again, like... They're too limiting, uh, in a sense, and I feel like they limit, uh, Volcal Run at least limits, I feel like, a certain type of Pokemon. Uh, not to the extent that a Pokemon like, you know, Hoopa would have done in the past, or Greninja in the past, or Mega Lucario type of thing, but uh, I would put Volk and Kiram, mainly because I find them extremely limiting in the team builder, which doesn't necessarily make them uncompetitive uh so i guess i'm indifferent like i don't consider them a test uh, uncompetitive but i do think they do deserve a chance to be suspect tested because i would like to hear more opinions on this um team building issues how would i even put this i'm trying to think like restrictive in the builder sure but I also think the point of a suspect test isn't to say, okay, this mod is broken, let's ban it. It's, it as, even though most people think that offensive Pokemon, this is probably fire to think too, just because of the past. But, um, oh, it's basically death row, right? You put it, uh, suspect tests are formality. This Pokemon is going to be banned no matter what. Um, whereas with this, it would just be, okay, this is restrictive. Uh, should, it, should we suspect test it? Let's see what the community actually has to say about it. So... Do I actually think they're busted Pokemon in play? Not necessarily, no. But I think they're hella restrictive in the builder. Uh, to the point where it's almost like annoying uh, to build. Is there anything else not mentioned that you would like to see the console look into in the near future? You already know. 
<laughs> you already know. I'm always going to put that. I'm going to advocate for it. Any other comments, suggestions, and concerns? Yeah. If we're going to talk about King's Rock, talk about other luck aspect slash items that only boost luck and give, what is it? Hold up. Lee slash defensively. I.E. Bright Powder plus Sand Veil. So, that. Do you meet any of the following tournament criteria? One game in World Cup 2021, qualify for OLT, cycle one or two, qualify for Smogon Tour, or three plus Sword and Shield OU games in SBL? Yes. Are you currently ranked in the top 250 of the Sword and Shield OU Gen 8 metagame? Click X for oh, 69. Nice. So, yes. Click X friend. Do I have any other? Any other? I'm pretty sure I have two other alts in there, or maybe three. But uh, yeah, so overall, I don't know. I'm really indifferent when it comes to King's Rock. It's I'm finding it. If I was losing to King's Rock every single time, it'd be different, right? Like if it had a higher chance, if it was like 50, it's like, you know, I I think that people are filling it more because it's obviously being spammed on the OLT ladder and. Uh, you know, Finch also had an, a thing to talk about that too. Oh, Quick Claw is another item as well. Now, if we're going to talk about that too, that's another big one. Finch obviously asked people, and I mean, I asked people to use Slowbro too so we can get that boy to OU because it'd be so cool to see Galarian, Slowbro, and OU. But overall, I'm really indifferent when it comes to that. I can't see it banned, right? Let me click on this real quick. Yeah, because this just straight up says ban, right? Like, it's just a straight-up ban. It's not even a suspect. They're not even, like... This is them gauging our opinion right now, which I, I don't necessarily... Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard for me to say, oh, yeah, I've been swept three times by Cloisters, so it should be banned type of thing. I don't know. I, I need more. Like, I've also been slipped by Ironhead, Jirachi, Air Slash, Togekiss, Sludge Bomb, Poison, Skull Burns, and things like that, too. So there's a lot. But leave your thoughts down below, guys, and um, thank you, everybody, for watching. This was a lot more chill. I just wanted to just talk about it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.